Well, welcome. This is Chris Dawson, uh, along with my co-host, Kirsten Winkler. And we are here with John McGee, uh, Vice President of Group Accounts with Evernote. And uh, thank you very much for joining us. I'm really excited to get a chance to talk about uh, a little bit about what Evernote is able to do for, for schools, uh, obviously a group account, uh, as well as sort of your vision for where Evernote is headed uh, in, in the industry and, and particularly in the educational vertical. Uh, so thank you so much for joining us today. Great, yeah. Thanks for thanks for having us here. Um, yeah, I can. You have a question? You want to start with questions, or you want to just go uh, kind of talk about what we've been doing? Well, I'll tell you what. Why don't you give me a, uh, the uh, little summary of, of where things have been happening? Obviously, lots of great news for Evernote recently, and uh, maybe just a you know quick preview as well of uh, where you see things headed in the next six months, twelve months, and then we can get into a few specific questions. Okay, sure. Um, so we've been growing like crazy, as you've probably seen in the in the media report. So um, we closed a round of funding recently. Uh, we've launched a service in China. Um, I was recently uh, in Spain talking about a, a pilot program that we just launched there with a prestigious school there. Um, it's about seven campuses, uh, two universities associated with it. Um, so we've seen sort of tremendous growth across our user population. Um, we're we're very actively sort of understanding how teachers and students and administrators and then IT folks in the education space are using Evernote, and we've really been blown away just by the uh, the amazing power and the, and the and the transformation that they're using Evernote for in the classroom and in in the way that they teach. So we've really been spending a lot of time in in understanding that, talking to users, talking to teachers, and then figuring out how can we make this uh, how can we make Evernote you know accessible to everybody and, and used by millions of students and teachers. I mean, it it is used now by millions, but it really should be used by everybody. It's um. Uh, we have the free service, so there's there's really no no barrier in terms of price, and so really it's you know, we view it as our job to figure out how to reach those users. So you know that's that's talking to uh, you know to you folks, it's talking with schools, it, it's participating in in events, and really trying to say like, hey, here's a great tool out there, and um, it doesn't need to cost you a lot of money. You just need to understand that this is something you can make use of today. It's available. Uh, now for you on all your devices and, and into the future really is the thing that, that it'll grow with you. So there's a, there's a number of things around that we've been exploring. Hmm. When we look, oh, go, go ahead, <laughs> I just wanted to say when we look in the history of Evernote, you sort of uh, uh, had always focused, uh, at least um, uh, have always mentioned uh, education. Um, and uh, was it sort of one of the... Um, uh, first things, even um, at the beginning, when uh, they founded Evernote, that they were thinking of an educational use, um, or did it sort of uh, came in um, that um, you for, folks saw it um, uh, in a second thought, maybe uh, it would also be very useful um, for educational use? Yeah, that's a really interesting question. So. Basically, the whole the, the the company philosophy is around. Um, we, we built Evernote for ourselves. You know, we we want uh, we we want better brains. We want to be able to remember things, um, and, and we think everybody would want that. So it was never a, a sort of target market like let's build mm -hmm. something for education. But at the same time, <clears throat> excuse me, we're all constantly learning. I mean, we're all um, uh, you know obviously we're a tech focused company. We're interested in uh, you know understanding life and the things around us and you know building interesting products and so um, so naturally we're learners and what we found as people started using it is we had just tremendous feedback and reception from the education community. So it was really the the teachers and administrators and and students coming to us and saying we are finding just tremendous utility in in using Evernote. It's just a fantastic tool for us. It's changed the way I study the way I teach. It's improved my grades. It's improved my connection with students, with parents. You know, for teachers, mm -hmm. teachers feel like they can build, um, so, you know, better lesson plans. You know, uh, they they can keep things from one year to the next and sort of build up and improve. So, as teachers, they became better professionals. As students, they became better learners. As administrators, they were able to focus more, you know, on the education process and less on the, uh, you know, the administrative details. It's more about creating. Mm -hmm. Just a fantastic learning environment for the kids. So that's a long answer to we, we we didn't build it specifically for the education market, but that is our largest demographic. We really um, have seen tremendous use, and and it just makes sense because students are, are sort of at the 
it's a major focus point for them in their lives as far as learning. Like they, they are, that's their job, right? They're, they're in there to learn. Teachers are there to help them learn. So they really are, um, you know, able to, to, to take this concept of lifelong learning and start it right there and, and put it to the test and then incorporate into how they do things. So, um, so the, the message has really resonated that the tool is fantastic for them in terms of simplicity, ease of use, again, accessibility. So, you know, kids today have, access to, you know, it might be an iPod Touch or a phone or a smartphone phone or uh, just a web browser in a, in a school lab computer. Um, so really sort of as they grow in terms of the devices that they use, and we're working with teachers that have students in second grade that are using iPads to learn and draw and, and take advantage of Sketch and, and do things in the classroom, you know, of course, all the way through college. So it's really something that, that grows with you and, and moves along with you and, and doesn't lock you into a specific system. Mm-hmm. So one of the things that that people find is, you know, when they uh, when they spend a lot of money on deploying a system, you know, they, they get they look for specific things, uh, and and in large part they they may get those, but it's a it's a somewhat siloed environment. So as the student goes from you know primary to secondary, and then high school, and then go, you know goes to college, all that stuff stays behind. So all of the great things that I built up, and so like e-portfolios is a great example. Uh, teachers are really really excited about. What students can do with portfolios, and you know, just as uh, it would have been great if I could have access to all the stuff that I built up, and so giving students an environment where they can keep their material and, and keep it forever, and then use it is just fantastic. And so they really latched on to this idea of something that goes with them that's that's a personal tool. You know, as the student, I have uh, you know an account with Evernote, and all my stuff goes there, and then I can keep it, and I can build on it, and I can take it with me, and I can search and use and, and keep learning, and that's really um, that's a really powerful thing for uh, for students. How how can Evernote work, uh, or or what sort of algorithms or or even best practices are available to students if they want to use it to put together this portfolio? So you know, starting in the, the ninth grade or the seventh grade. All the way right on through college. What's what's a a, a reasonable way of, of using this to keep all of those those bits of everything together and in a way that's then usable when they want to turn this into a, a digital resume or a digital dossier? Yeah, so I I can give you um, sort of one rough example of how people use it. I mean, the organization of material is a sort of a, a highly personal activity. You know, what works for you, for for me might not necessarily work for you, but um, it, we try to provide several mechanisms for that. So you know, the first sort of most obvious level of, of organization is uh, notebooks. So everything in Evernote is in a notebook. Everything is a note, and then you you can you, it's in one notebook by default. But you can sort of create your own notebook. So, um, you know, I have notebooks for my you know home stuff, say projects I need to do, and then I have work things, and then sometimes I subdivide those. And so for for teachers and students, um, we see a lot of teachers organized by classes. You know, same with students. Um, and then maybe roll that into a, an overall notebook for a year. So that, that's sort of just the basic container type. Um, the, the, the next thing that you can do is tagging things. So I can mark something as relevant to, uh, you know, biology or maybe more broadly science or, you know, this is, um, this is high school. Um, so I can, I can sort of mark things as relevant and then the search makes it really easy. Um, but a lot of people um, don't go to the trouble of doing tags and, and even very granular notebooks because the search is so powerful in Evernote. So one of the things that you get when you put um, images and, and documents into Evernote is the ability to search inside of them. So uh, I take pictures of whiteboards all the time, and, and we get this from teachers as well. And, and, and students often are more comfortable. Uh, they may be more comfortable taking notes on paper. Um, so they'll take notes and then take a picture of it with a camera or a smartphone or use a scanner. Um, so we have a lot of partnerships with scanner manufacturers who uh, teachers really like this. They can have a scanner in the room. You know, the students might take notes or or it might be a test result or something. They'll scan it into their Evernote account. And then our, on, on our servers, um, we do image recognition on the text there. And so now I can type in uh, economics or biology or, you know, whatever it is I want to search for and say, uh, you know, all of those things will come up. And. And not only that, but as I type my search, it, it refines the set of notes that I can actually see displayed. So I get a nice sort of little uh, text snippet with an image, um, if that's in the note. And then I can keep narrowing that down and easily find what I'm looking for. So in the organization, is sort of personal, but we provide several tools and, and, and powerful ways to, to let you use that information once you put it in. Because we do anticipate that people keep building this up you know, for the rest of their lives, so it's not just... 
it's not just school, but it's then when I go on to professional life, you know, first job out of college, maybe I'm, you know, hopefully I'm, you know, using my, my major. So I was an economics major or computer science or whatever. And I can go find stuff and then keep building it. And I do, you know, I read things on the web. I read interesting articles, you know, the Harvard Business Review or text magazines or something. So I, I clip those in my Evernote account. And I can can spend a cut with the school and then have access to all of it. Make that really easy. That's awesome. Well, you know, if we think about then these these different sorts of ways of building content and building materials, let's talk a little bit about Sketch, which is really we've been talking a fair amount recently about this idea that the, the, the data we represent and use is becoming increasingly iconic in nature. It's not so much uh, this idea of having to create essays. We're, we're, we're looking at things in a different way. So, so now we have Skitch. Tell me about that, mm-hmm. how that fits into this. Yeah, Skitch is a, a really a fantastic tool. Um, we've been big fans at of Skitch for a long time, which is why we wanted to get closer to the company and um, you know, eventually we were able to bring them into the fold. So Skitch is visual communication. Um, you know, it's, it's sort of the natural uh, extension of what you're trying to do with Evernote, which is to remember things, ultimately communicate things, and, and, and make that either you know with yourself or with other people. And so, being able to add a visual component to that is just a, a fantastically uh, you know efficient and exciting way, especially in an education environment, for for kids to make use of that. So, we see people um, take pictures of, of lab experiments and then circle uh, you know here's a dissection of a frog or something in a different part, um, a test. Uh, you know, scan it and then circle areas, you know, place where you got wrong, make annotations, um, key concepts out of a, a, you know, a whiteboard lecture or blackboard, um, maps. So, uh, detailing kind of here, here's directions, here's where we're going, or here's what the, what the field trip is going to be about. Look for this, you know, sort of significant type of architecture that maybe they're going out to see. So it's, it's a very efficient sort of a um, fun way to, to interact with some of the tools that, that you, we have available today in terms of technology. But then use that to build up your your own knowledge base, your information story, you know, because all of it is, of course, in Evernote and then accessible for everywhere, for forever, and searchable. And uh, another uh, company I remember in a talk with uh, Becky Split, CEO uh, over at uh, Study Blue, that you uh, also um, were or are working together with them on the Peak uh, app. Or project and uh, how is that going? How has it uh, developed since you you launched? Yeah, Peak is um, uh, a fantastic way for, for really anybody, but um, particularly kids, obviously, who are, are in the process of learning things all the time, um, to to make use of their Evernote account and study things. So, um, Study Blue uh, is a great partner of ours. Um, so we've talked to them a number of times, and, and there is an integration there. Um, in general, your, your the idea with Peak is that you can put things into your Evernote account as sort of a uh, here's the clue, here's the mm-hmm. answer form, and then take advantage of the, the the iPad smart cover. Or if you don't have a smart cover, you can also just use a, a you know your finger on the screen to uncover a little portion of the screen, the bottom part, and then uncover more. Um, and we've added uh, audio support into there, um, so you can actually uh, study foreign languages in that way. And, and one of the yeah, one of the notebooks that comes with Peak actually has uh, French words in there, so you can open it up and it'll play the French word, and then you can test yourself. So uh, it's a really nice, uh, again, sort of extending this concept of if I'm putting my important things, all of my important stuff, the things I want to remember and use every day into Evernote, mm-hmm. uh, let's give you easy ways to um, to get it out, to use it, to search it, to take advantage of it in different environments. And so Peak is a, it's a really natural way to make use of that information. Yeah, I found that very charming. And uh, so also in general about Evernote, um, at least it feels to me that you put um, quite some effort into really making native apps uh, for um, all the different devices, not only the, the, the different platforms at at, that you are like very careful um, about this user experience and put uh, yeah great importance on that and um, so is it really the case and uh, if so are you continuing doing so or do you think at one point uh, it will still not be uh, possible anymore when we can imagine that there's more and more coming out there and um, people using other platforms <laughs> many other devices um, but uh, yeah, what what do you think about that? Yeah, the um, 
uh, user experience is uh, sort of one of the core foundations of how we've um, uh, of how we view the company and how we how we build the the, the the teams everywhere. So user experience has to be excellent. You know, this is one of the problems I think. Um, if you look at software development today, it's really targeted to uh, the buyer, not the user. So so software is optimized for sale, not for use. And 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 we are all about optimizing for use. We want the user experience to be so good. Um, and nothing to do with, with pain or not pain. The user experience needs to be so good that you want to use it. It's not something that you have to spend, you know, days going to uh, training sessions that you have to sort of, you know, dictate by policy, okay, everybody's going to use, you know, this app or this system, you know, and, and, and getting students, of course, to adopt that and use it is a losing battle because they're only going to do the bare minimum. Oh, students and teachers as well. I mean, and we've all run into this, at, you know, at, at work. It's, I mean, they're they're trying to teach, not learn software. So sure. for us, the user experience has to be there. It it it, it will continue to be excellent. We have uh, most of our resources in the company goes into product development. So we have a number of designers, both graphic and user experience. Um, we have dedicated teams on all the different platforms, um, and and we won't um, we won't compromise that aspect of development. So we have teams dedicated on all those different environments because. Each is different, and, and each has different strengths. So, you know, Android is different from from iOS. is different from BlackBerry. Um, you know, we had a WebOS uh, app. Um, we have a team for the for the web app because lots of people use it through the browser, the desktops. Um, the user experience has to be there. I mean, that that's that's the only reason that we've been able to build this the, the user base that we have, and 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 why people are so enthusiastic about using this because it, it fits into your life. You don't have to sort of uh, you know, shoe on what you do, what your process, you know, what works for you into some set of, uh, you know, templated fields like, okay, I have to type this here and that there, and now it has to match, you know, I can't use numbers and letters there. It, it needs to work for you. And so that's what we build is things that, that work for people because, you know, we're the first customer. Everything that we build, we, we use first because we live it every day. So you you bring up an interesting point with the the web app. That's something actually I've just only recently kind of revisited. I, the the native apps are, are quite nice, but I just had a need for it recently uh, to get to some information that I had. So I logged in via the web, and it actually is it it, it is a nice uh, experience right online. So in terms of utilization, what do you actually see happening? Uh, do you see uh, you know a fair amount of utilization, or are, you, are people primarily using native apps with Evernote? Our usage split from uh, for, for mobile is about sixty percent, um, and then desktop is about forty percent. Web app tends to overlap both of those categories, so actually um, many people tend to use Evernote on two or even three platforms. Um, you know, obviously those are people who are getting a lot of use out of Evernote, so they tend to be our most active users. Um, but the the web app is a you know the key part of our of our strategy to make it accessible everywhere. Not everybody has. Um, you know, uh, a readily accessible desktop, laptop, you know, phone. Again, labs, you know, labs and schools are a great example. Um, and and also, you know, we we tend to think, uh, or maybe a lot of people think about, um, you know, the U.S. market as you know being a, a, as dictating the flavor of everything uh, that a company does in terms of software. But you know, sort of uh, both culture, um, you know, technology reach, resources, um, you know, availability of different types of resources vary dramatically across the world. And we're actually only about 30% of our user base uh, in the U.S. So we are an extremely global company, and we're very focused on uh, Evernote use worldwide. We're translated into over 18 languages on major platforms and about 30 plus on, you know, on, on a platform. Um, and we have... Uh, we have folks throughout the world, so we're very focused on worldwide usage. So the, the web browser the, and the, the web experience of interacting with it is, is a key piece of continuing to make it accessible, you know, no matter what environment or device you're using. Excellent. So in terms of, of the actual the company itself um, and, and being able to, to you know, have this be really a, a sustainable model, obviously you're giving away a, a lot of stuff for free, some, some really you know, quite quite advanced uh, and and expensive to develop things for free. Um, as as more and more of us come to rely on on Evernote, and, and I, I'm certainly one of them who relies very heavily on Evernote. Um, Thank you. <laughs> I mean, it, it's it's on every device and every computer, and, and it's all over the place. Um, but okay, so now it's something on which I depend. Now, I, I'm I'm a a professional, so I'm at a point in my life where I could say, all right, well, I'll reach a point where I can pay for this. Oh, 
or I, I will happily pay for this, but from a student's perspective, not so much. And if we're looking at that as, as a market, how do you see this being a, a continually sustainable thing so that as we come to rely on it, we don't uh, don't ever lose it? Yeah, so our um, we've built the business model, um, you know, from from the ground up to be you know very efficient in terms of the the service that's provided to our free users. So uh, we want to be a great experience, and we feel that by creating a great experience and not trying to force users into an early commitment, ultimately, um, you know, they do what you do, which is they they use it more and more, and at some point they decide that hey, this is such a great tool, I, I want more of it, and at that point they decide to pay. So there's really no selling involved. It's um, it's education about what you can do with Evernote, helping it be actually more relevant and more powerful for you. Uh, and plus, you keep adding stuff over time, so it, as a as a knowledge base, as your you know external brain, it becomes more valuable. Um, but we're we're very careful about the the costs around build, building a scalable service, um, and uh, that's worked quite well for us. Um, you know, our, our our rates of conversion are I mean, we're very happy with that um, in terms of the business model, um, and we we're able to continue investing in product development. So our 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 premium users versus our our free users are very, at a very comfortable point in terms of the cost model. Yeah, and I think I have heard. Uh, uh, coming back to your uh, very first uh, answer about your recent round of funding, um, I think I read that um, it is enough for the next some 100 years. Uh, so um, that will definitely help um, as well. But I think uh, particularly uh, probably people in tech, but uh, certainly people in education are somewhat um, skeptical and also a little bit afraid of uh, starting to use a service and uh, really like a service and then maybe for some reason um, this particular service was um, primarily being built to be sold and uh, with no guarantee that it will still exist in some two or, or three years um, as you never know uh, what well, the, the buyer is going to do with it. And I think um, we can be very sure that um, Evernote uh, was not built for these reasons. And also, uh, as you pointed out, with a sustainable business model and, well, also enough um, money in your war chest, I think it is really um, a tool to, to stay and uh, for the lifelong uh, process of learning. Yeah, the um, yeah, that's a really important thing for us. That the trust that that um, that we want users to place in us, because obviously you're, you're putting uh, you know pictures, notes, memories, you know things that you know in many cases uh, people are disposing of those things afterwards. So bills, invoices, papers, things like that. I mean, uh, all, all kinds of personal information. So trust is a major piece of that, and, and it's one of the it is the reason that we are so transparent about. Um, how we operate the company, uh, how we're doing, uh, and also how we make money. So there is never any, any premise of, you know, at some point in the future we're going to figure out how to make money by doing, by advertising, by mining your data, or by sharing it with partners. We're very clear and explicit and upfront about that. That is not our business model. We want to make uh, a fantastically useful service that, that, that people really love to use, and at some point uh, if you decide to pay, then that's great, and then that's on your own terms. Um, but that's the business model. There, there's no, there's no hidden agenda there. So yeah, having people, you know, trust that their data is private uh, and that will and will be there forever um, is really the, the key to the success here. Mm -hmm. And I mean, for schools or generally people in education, when you go to evernotecom slash schools uh, you can also see that it's minus 50% um, for um, educators or for schools. So it's not really, um, I would put it, it's very affordable and much more generous than that the sometimes uh, 10% less some other big companies give uh, people in education. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm glad that you like that. Um, it's very, um, uh, like I said, we, we really want to make it accessible to everybody. It's um, it's a matter of what, what fits for you. So, you know, what fits in your classroom or your school, your school district, uh, or, you know, or college. So um, we're working with a number of schools to understand, that, you know, how does it fit and, and how are they using it. Uh, but the, the free service is used by you know, over 30 million people. Um, and then we, we felt like we wanted to do something in the education community um, as far as making the, the, the access a little bit easier to the premium, if, if that's right. Um, but in general, it's really not a it's not a selling thing. It's, it's something that we want to make useful and available to everybody, and, and hopefully at a price point that makes sense, 
given the you know alternatives of, of potentially you know deploying your own servers, of maintaining things, and then having staff and software updates. You know, Evernote apps are all available you know directly from the app stores or on our site for free, um, and so people can use them on all their devices. There's no you know sort of IT thing that you need to install. It, it's really about you know how do we how do we use something to to create a better classroom, to to create a learning environment, and help people learn, and that's that's great. That's what we want people to be focused on in, in education, but, you know, and also in your life. It's not about, like, okay, I need to figure out how I sign up for this service, and then do I want to keep paying for it? You know, it, it's really something that's supposed to help you every day, all day, anywhere that you are. And so Evernote being a cloud service with this, you know, the, the model of the apps everywhere makes that really easy and, uh, uh, and a great value proposition. Absolutely. I think uh, once you you have tried it or started using it, uh, you use it on a very uh, regular or even daily basis, as you, as you said. <laughs> Chris? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I know time is, is running short for you, but I, I did want to uh, ask one, one final question. Uh, what, what are you excited about for, for Evernote uh, coming up, uh, long-term or, or short-term? What, what do you see uh, coming down the pike that's maybe enabled by new technologies, enabled by uh, more ubiquitous access, whatever it might be? What, what are you excited about for, for the company and the product? Yeah, there's a few things. Um, so we're we're working on uh, on some neat pieces in the in the service end. So uh, related notes is something that we feel like we can provide a lot of value to people. So you're you're putting all this information into Evernote, and then we already have great tools for searching on it. But uh, you know, what if when you create um, and you've seen some of this maybe in the in the auto titling feature. So when I start to take a note and I'm in a meeting, so that it gets an auto title, or I've added from Evernote Hello, or it was, you know, a, a set of pictures from a restaurant because we met, um, you know, over lunch. So pulling to get, um, that, that helps make them more valuable to you, and it could be location-based or, you know, or how you took them, maybe the source, your phone. Uh, so pulling that together, I think it's going to be a really um, valuable piece of the Evernote service and will make it even more useful to you to sort of, uh, again, have the information that you want at the point that you need it. Um, we are in the process, so, so my responsibility is, uh, is group accounts, which means, you know, sort of groups of people using Evernote together, collaborating, so it's education as well as enterprise, um, and we're actually building out right now uh, an Evernote business offering that will uh, sort of address some of the institutional deployment concerns while still creating the same, uh, not even creating, we already have it, the same service that people, uh, you know, want to use every day and have access to in their, in their work lives. Um, Many of them already are using it. We want to make that uh, even more uh, sort of easy and uh, for for businesses to sign on to. Um, and then, you know, overall, it's like like I said, the U.S. is only thirty percent, and of course we're we'll have headquarters here, but we have offices around the world. So, you know, there are thirty million plus people using Evernote today, but there's seven billion people on the planet. Uh, you know, we just uh, launched in China. Uh, I mentioned we spent some time in Spain. So the the, the use cases for Evernote translate really, really well, um, you know, a, across cultures and languages. So, you know, the, the, the problems that, that teachers and students and administrators face today in education in the U.S. exist everywhere, and the, the problems as well as the, 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 you know, the way that you can use Evernote to solve them. So this idea of e-portfolios, of, uh, of maybe the flipped classroom, of, um, of teachers sharing and creating a collaborative uh, sort of experience for students uh, and parents as well to get parents involved. Because really it's about the connection between, uh, between those people that create the learning experience and the, and the aha moments for students because, they, you know, they all run into trouble at different places as they're learning. So that problem um, and, and the solution translates extremely well, uh, you know, across languages and, and countries. So, uh, we're really just at the beginning of, of what we're building. You know, we're learning a lot right now about how users uh, use the service and, and how it can help people. Uh, and I'm really excited about sort of taking that uh, and getting that message out everywhere because I think, uh, you know, billions of people can benefit from it. It's, it's really a, it's a fantastic opportunity. I agree 100%. That's a, a perfect place to, to wrap this up. Uh, really, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, Evernote, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's one heck of a service, and, and uh, I, I, would, I would be even more Thank lost you. than I normally am uh, without Evernote. Uh, so uh, that's the only thing that keeps me even remotely straight. So thank you again uh, for being here and for, for talking much, and sharing John. with us. Do please Very keep us posted as well. John McGee, uh, Vice President of Group Accounts, Evernote. Thank you. Thank you.